It could have been that. It could have been this. Thank you, God. Be grateful. Would you type that in? Would you say that over the conference call? Would you say it and say, be grateful. God knows you're hurting. God knows exactly where the pain is. He knows the discomfort in you. He knows the anxiety. He knows the bill situation. He knows the job situation. He knows when this pandemic will end. But be grateful. He knows you're hurting. And he's given a word specifically to us on today. And that word can be found in the book of Isaiah, the 35th chapter, in its entirety. Isaiah chapter 35, again, we welcome everyone. Mm. Be grateful. Oh, God. Thank you, God, for your goodness. We've got nothing to complain about. Because the God we serve is a good God. I said the God we serve is a good God. Hallelujah. Praying for my nieces, their mother, the loss of their uncle Rodney in Chicago. Got that news a couple of days ago and my nieces I know are hurting and Sister-in-law who once was is hurting and their family is hurting. Know that we are praying for you. Yes. And everyone who has suffered loss, unexpected loss, untimely loss, we are, our hearts are heavy with you, but we delight yes. in the joy of the Lord being our strength. Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. For the sake of clarity, I'm reading from the New King James Version this morning. It reads, well, say hallelujah if you got it. If you got it, type in hallelujah. Say hallelujah over the conference call to amen. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The excellence of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord. The excellency of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals, where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and the road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. We're lifting up Partakers Church in particular. All of those who are whose hearts may have may be hurting, may be heavy. God wants to remind us on this morning as a subject to this sermon of hope and a future. And a 
preach from this thought, a hope and the future. Would you type that in so that you can remember it? A hope and the future. I need your prayers. For someone who finds themselves merely coping from day to day with no hope of things getting better than it has, the Lord wants you to know and be convinced that better days are ahead of you. And it's going to take your faith in God alone to transport you from where you are to where he's destined you to be. For someone else who is struggling financially as this economic downturn which, is, which was brought on by decisions that you didn't even make is taking a toll on you mentally. It's going to take your faith in God alone to lead you away from the debt and stress that comes along with it to a place where your daily bread will sustain you and your family until things get better. For those of you who have suffered sickness, have lost loved ones to sickness, and are recovering from sickness, the Lord wants you to know that the grief, sadness, and anguish can be confronted and comforted by the power that comes from his Holy Spirit. And although it may not happen immediately, it will happen eventually. So many who are of the household of faith are going through a tough time where our patience, our prayers, and petitions are being put to the test in ways like never before. However, God wants you to rest assured that even though we're hurting, even though times are tough, even though we're making adjustments to this new normal and anxiously awaiting for this season to pass, there is a hope and a future for those of us who refuse to give in. Amen. God knows that some of us have become weakened, weary, worn out, and worried. But the good news is that we can still win. The finish line is still in front of you, and your future will not meet a premature finish. In other words, God's got more in store for you, but you've got to remain hopeful even when you're clueless as to what God's purpose for you is in everything that's going on around you. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says it like this, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. We can assume what our expected end is based on our senses. But in times like these, our senses aren't even making sense. We can estimate an expected end based on the predictions given to us by the so-called professionals. But with the ever-changing realities they present, it only causes more confusion. We can predict what our expected end is based on forecasts given to us by politicians, scientists, and journalists that seem to conflict with one another, therefore creating even more chaos. But when your hope yeah. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, you dare not trust the sweetness frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. You may not see it now, but things are going to get better. You may not feel it now, but things are going to get better. I don't hear nobody. It probably ain't too many because ain't nobody here but y'all. Tell your neighbor it's going to get better. You may not hear it from the voices you're allowing to speak to you, but God's promise to us is that things are going to get better. What we lost will be found. What was taken will be returned. What was sent will be healed. What was closed will be reopened. And what was missing will be maxed out because we serve a God who will never allow anything he's promised in your life to be taken by a lesser power without a plan to provide more than before. Job will tell you 
that out of all the losses he experienced, out of all the suffering he endured, out of all the pain he entered, and out of all those who thought he was finished, God ended up giving him double for his trouble. And I believe that God is preparing his church and people for a recovery, a rebound, a resurgence, and the redemption that will resemble the resurrection. I'll shout by my dog on self. Hallelujah! You're coming back from this in a much better position and a much better person with a much better praise. Isaiah presents for us in detail God's plan to restore a people after having lived through some extremely difficult times while their enemies mocked God and taunted them because their prayers for restoration seemed to have gone unanswered. Believe it or not, there are folk or there have been folk looking at you and listening to your responses to recent events and they're wondering why you're not complaining. They're wondering why you're still praying. They're wondering why you're still faithful. And they're wondering why you're still praising God. Can I tell you why? You're doing it because you don't mourn as others who have no hope. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't cry sometimes. It doesn't mean that your pain isn't as real. It doesn't mean that sickness won't come your way. It doesn't mean that you're not suffering. <coughs> That's not COVID. And it doesn't mean that you don't get down and out sometimes, but it does mean that through it all, I will learn to look on the bright side of dark situations because I've got a God I can lean on. And I serve a God who can lead me through the valleys and the shadows of death. All I came to say is there is a hope in the future for you because God's got somebody praying for you. God's got somebody pushing you. God's got somebody pursuing you to ensure that his plans for your life come to fruition. That's all I'm saying. Okay, you want Bible. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 4 and 6 says it like this. In every prayer for all of you, I always pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, good God Almighty, will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. God will finish with you what he started in you. And remember, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus isn't obligated to finish what he has not authored. But the text in Isaiah is tailored to teach us a few things that he has authored, that he has approved, that he has assigned and anointed for our lives when your eyes are fixed and your faith is focused on the Father. Please understand that before we reach this point in the text, God has used the prophet Isaiah to prophesy an end to the suffering of his children. How does he do that? He does it by dealing directly with the source of your suffering. In this instance, it was their enemies, the Assyrians, and God provided for the saints a more grand and greater outcome in this chapter than in the previous chapter. I'll shout by myself. This shouts me, Reverend Brinton, because it reminds me that the chapters of my past yes. pale in comparison to the chapters of my present and my future. In chapter 34, yes. there was famine, failure, frustration, and fruitlessness. Yes. But in chapter 35, yes. we see flourishing, fortune, fertility, and fruitfulness. Yes. God is telling somebody today, that your best days are but a chapter away. Your last chapter may have been filled with pain, but in this chapter, God is revealing the purpose for your previous pain in order to produce the right kind of praise. There is a hope. And would you just type in the text 
that my breakthrough is a chapter away. My healing is a chapter away. And the only difference from one chapter to another is one page. I don't hear nobody in this church. God is getting ready to turn some things around in your life. There is a hope in the future for you. And God has granted it unto us by multiple means. Out of all you've suffered this far, out of all the pain you've endured to date, and out of all the various circumstances that seem to be working against you to defeat you, can I tell you this morning that there is a hope in the future? Yeah. Ask me why. why. There's a hope in the future, number one, because God is removing your stress. Stress comes when we lack what we need in order to do what needs to be done. Again, stress comes when we lack what we need in order to do what needs to be done. Many in the body of Christ are stressing because provisions that were once available through compensation received from our places of employment have all of a sudden diminished. And unemployment violence have reached an all-time high. Yeah. We're stressing. Yeah. Because the freedoms we once enjoyed have been threatened by an unseen enemy called COVID-19. Yeah. We're stressing. Because families are now forced into quarantine. Yeah. And are forced to come together. Yeah. And discover things about each other that they may have not previously known. The places that once brought us pleasure are now closed and we live in a democracy who now decides what is and who are the essentials and non-essentials. It's a stressful time when all that we've become accustomed to and labeled as normal have been suddenly shifted and we weren't prepared. The children of God were under great stress. They were under the stress of captivity their enemies, bondage, pressure to adapt to pagan leadership, and under constant attack. But the one thing they had through all of this was a connection to God. Your connection dictates your direction. And Isaiah prophesies to these people that God is going to remove everything that has caused you to stress so that your hope can be renewed. How does God do it? You're asking some good questions. It's right here in the text. The wilderness and the wastelands shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of our God. How do you see stress being removed? I'll tell you. God says that in order to remove your stress, I'm going to miraculously cause growth in places deemed impossible. The wilderness and wastelands in your life are going to be converted into productive places. God will put water in your wilderness so that the seed of what he's sowing will manifest in your life. Deserts are known to produce blossoms. Yeah. You can't plant blossom seeds in sand and expect the harvest. Yeah. But God said, in order to relieve your stress, yeah. I'm going to cause growth to come forth out of dormant, dead, dreadful, and deteriorating places. Only a God can pull off that type of miracle. He says the ground in which you graze will be so grateful that it will produce and perform its own symphony. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. Now, you know Lebanon, Lebanon was known for its cedar trees. Carmel was a wonderful wooded mountain and Sharon was known as a pleasant place for pastures. David said it in the eighth part of Psalm 23 and 2, he makes me to lie down. 
in green pastures. God has provided a place for his sheep to receive proper provision. It also denotes a form of prosperity for his people in that his plans for us means that our cups will continuously run over with blessings that cannot be contained. I believe that will remove somebody's stress. God can take care of you beyond the stimulus check you get from the government. He's got an everlasting, ever-flowing, ever-providing stimulus plan to make sure that his children's daily bread are met on a daily basis. Those who were formerly in the wilderness will be a witness to God's glory in operation where things were once obsolete. Preach, Winfrey. I'm doing the best I can. God is allowing trees, blossoms, and other plants to grow in places where they've never grown. And just as he's done it for them as a way to provide substance and shade in order to remove their stress, God is doing for you in this chapter according to our faith, which is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You have a hope and a future because God is removing I know you can't shout over it but I promise that if you praise God with all you got in the midst of your praise you'll find the stress that you came in with you'll find the stress that you logged on with you'll find the stress that you called in with suddenly leaving take a moment lift your hands and just tell the Lord thank you for removing the stress from my life. Some of y'all ain't been sleeping. Your pattern's been thrown all off. You've watched everything on Netflix. You made everything that you can think of to cook, and you're still under stress. But give it praise. Because you have a hope in the future. God is not only removing your stress, but secondly, God is renewing your strength. It's in the Bible. I wish I was smart enough to make this up myself. He's not only removing the stress, the tension, but he's, 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 he's renewing your strength. Stress, if left unattended, can weaken your walk in ways that leave you weary and worn out. The daily battle of coping with everything that's going on in and around us can leave us with a sense of fear, doubt, and uncertainty about the future. If you find yourself on the verge of giving up, and specifically if you find yourself, ah, uh, help me God, if you're having suicidal thoughts that are telling you that the world would be better without you, and if you feel drained and unable to maintain, I need you to remember and enact what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It reads, casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I need you to do that. Cast down those thoughts of defeat and finality. Cast down those thoughts of hopelessness, guilt, and shame. Cast down the negative things that have been spoken to you and about you and replace them with the word of God that is designed to strengthen you and bring you up out of that place of pity that you've allowed yourself to be put in. Saints of God, you've got to get it in your mind. What God says about you. He says, listen, you're wonderful. I wish somebody would just agree with God. Go on and type in and say, the Lord's talking about me right here. He says you're wonderful. He says you're, you're special. He says you're beautiful. He says you're awesome. He says you're amazing and great because you're his. And if you become weakened by everything that's happening in your life, let this word provide the fuel you need in order to journey through these turbulent times. Let this word jumpstart your joy. So the smile that has been taken by your current troubles can return to your face. If you're feeling weak, some, get some word in you. Because going a week without the word makes you weak. 
keeps you weak. God becomes our strength in times of weakness, as I feel you, Holy Ghost. And this is why Paul says to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. But when I am weak, hey, then I am strong. In your weakest hour, God will fill you with Holy Ghost power. And the word tells us in Isaiah chapter 40, talking about strength. My, my favorite scripture, Isaiah 4, I'm sorry, Isaiah 40, chapter, verses 29 through 31. He gives power yeah. to the faith. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. And to them who have no might, he increases strength. Yeah. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait. Upon the Lord. Y'all don't hear me. But I can hear myself pretty good. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk. And not faint. In other words, in other words, in times of weakness, God will become your strength. Go back and read verses 3 and 4. Of this 35th chapter of Isaiah, he provides power to his people. Can I show you where? Yeah. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. God provides strength to fight and to hold on while providing strength to stand. See, weak hands can't fight. I don't hear nobody. Amen. Weak hands cannot maintain a firm grip. Amen. God says he can make the firm, the feeble knees. Some folks say, now I'm going to get in your business. Some folks say that their lovers make them weak in the knees. Ooh, no. By the physical acts they perform. Amen. Some get weak in the knees when it comes to confronting the same enemies that threaten your future. Amen. Some have knees that are too weak to bend and pray. Amen. But I found out that those who bend their knees in prayer can stand firm in the midst of pain, yes. peril, problems, and persecutions. Yes. Thank God that he renews our strength daily to perform our duties. Not only that, but he tells us in verse 4, say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. God's word to those who are in fear of the outcome for yourselves and your families is simply this. Be strong and do not fear. I don't hear nobody. Those who are in fear concerning your current financial condition and employment situation, be strong and do not fear. Those of you worried about if you can make it through this pandemic, be strong and do not fear. Those who are in grief concerning those who are gone, be strong and do not fear. Those who are losing sleep, worrying about the plans, plots, and perspective of your enemies, be strong and do not fear. Ask me why. The enemy won't overtake you. The problems won't overwhelm you. And the battle won't overcome you because God says be strong and do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Can I tell you, he'll save you from yourself. He'll save you from going through hell. Yeah. And he'll save you from an eternity in hell. Yeah. We serve a God with a winning record against all things that oppose his will for our lives. Yeah. Can I tell you, it's God. If you leave it up to God, 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 God. Yeah. God will retaliate. Yeah. God will repay and God will rescue you yeah. all at the same time. Yeah. 
that's good news that ought to bring comfort to your soul. Knowing that there's no problem he can't solve. There's no battle he can't win. There's no enemy he can't defeat. There's no sickness he can't heal. There's no hurt he can't comfort. And there is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll do for you. Won't he do it? There is a hope in the future because God is removing your stress. Not only is God removing your stress, but God is renewing your strength. And thirdly, there's a hope in the future because God is straightening things out for you. <laughs> Would you type that in? God is straightening some things out. Now, if you don't need some things straightened out, this part ain't for you. Amen. Amen. Just type in there, God is straightening some things out for you. God is making things right in your life. He's making crooked ways straight. Yeah. He's straightening out some family issues, yeah. misunderstanding. He's yeah. straightening out some health concerns, yeah. tainted reputation. Yeah. And look at the beauty of this. He provides a list as an expression of his love for us. Yeah. Can I show you what he's fixing? Yeah. See, he's making Christian sense out of common sense. Yeah. Let me show you how he's going to fix it. Okay. No, let me say, let me show you some things he's going to straighten out. Okay. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open. Yeah. Not just your physical eyes, yeah. but your spiritual eyes as well. God is going to allow you to see his great works in ways you've never seen them before. He replaces blindness with sight and darkness with light. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Yeah. God is going to allow you, Deacon Fred, he's going to allow us once again to hear his voice uh -huh. in the midst of all competing voices trying to win our attention and allegiance. Yeah. See, we've become so consumed with the unwise words of this world Amen. that it has made us deaf to what God is saying. We're believing more in the words of the false prophets, yeah. fake president, politicians, and pundits than we are the great high priest, yeah. which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Can I tell you something? That out of all the negative news we've been hearing, it's good to know that God is unstopping the ears of the deaf, yeah. those who could not hear before. Yeah. God is not just straightening up our eyes and our ears, but he goes on to say, then the lame shall leap like a deer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, glory. I know some of you all are in the comfort and confines of your home, but this will be a good time for you to just get out that bed, yeah. get off that couch, and just leap just to make sure your legs ain't lame. And what you're doing, lift up a hallelujah. Legs that once had no strength. Yeah. Legs that were once immobile and legs that were once powerless will receive power from on high. Uh -huh. Letitia, I know you can appreciate this being the runner that you are. Yeah. And not only shall they stand, yeah. not only shall they walk, yeah. not only will they run, yeah. but they'll leap yeah. like a deer. Yeah. Can I tell you that a deer leaps high yeah. and a deer leaps far. Uh -huh. And God has given us a hope so great and the future so bright yeah. that it will cause us to leap high above principalities yeah. and powers and as far from our issues yeah. that it will make small all the things we've made big in our lives. Yeah. Deacon Willis will be like David. Yeah. And that while those around him thought that Goliath was too big to hit, yeah. David yeah. said he's too big to yeah. miss. While they were saying he's too big to fight, yeah. David was saying the bigger they are, yeah. the harder they fall. Yeah. Not only will God straighten out your legs, but he says in the tongue of the dumb shall sing. Yeah. God is taking our mouths off mute and our praise yeah. off pause. Yeah. He's going to loosen our tongues in order to proclaim his goodness, in order to testify about his greatness and sing to his glory. 
God is in, he's invading the quiet places in your life. And by this miracle, he's making you mention his magnificence. He's fixing it. He's straightening it out so that you can tell somebody about Jesus. And so that you can say, hallelujah, glory to his name. Now, if you noticed, the order in which he straightens things out, Marvel, you'll see that he starts with us. Yeah. Mouses don't have ears, eyes, tongues, and legs. He deals with humanity. He deals with us first. Because if he doesn't straighten us out first, he can straighten the situation out and we won't even recognize it. Oh, God, help me. He has to straighten us out first. Because if he straightens us out and don't straighten out the situation, we'll mess up the situation once it is straightened out. So he starts with us. Eyes, ears, tongue, mouths, and legs. He, it's right here in the Bible. I wish I could make this up. He straightens our sight, our sound, our strength, and our speech because all are interconnected. And when working in cooperation according to God's will, everything that was wrong must become right. Once he straightens out the person, he then straightens out the provisions. For the waters shall burst forth <laughs> in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals, where each lay there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. God's provision. Somebody shout God's provision. Will quench the dry places and spaces in your life and will provide irrigation for our seed. God not only deals with the person and the provision, he deals with the place and the predators that can be found along the path. I'm in the Bible. It says a highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Can I tell you that there is a highway and a road that God has presented for our consideration? We can choose the highway of holiness, which leads to heaven, Oh, we can choose the road which leads to death, hell, and destruction. If you recall in the New Testament, Jesus says to the listener in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, he says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there. That means a whole lot of y'all going to take the broad way to hell. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads up to life. And few there be that find it. Could God be saying that there's going to be more people in hell than in heaven? Holiness. Ooh, that's a word we scared of. Holiness. I, yeah, yeah, I can shout out, but we don't shout out that no more. Ho holiness. holiness. I, 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 know, I know I'm going to challenge all y'all who listen to me because I know holiness ain't a word y'all can shout over. But I'm going to challenge you to grow in this particular part of the sermon presentation. Take a moment and give God praise for holiness. That you don't have, I don't have what it takes to make you holy, but the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us is what makes, can you shout, I'm holy. I'm not perfect, but hey, I'm holy. I don't have it all together, but I'm holy. Oh, my ducks ain't in a row, but I, I'm holy. My money didn't make me holy. My house don't make me holy. Somebody shout, it's the Holy Ghost. You can cover up everything and still be a whore. You can put on the most expensive suit, hat, and shoes and still be a You can look holy and not live holy. 
God don't hear nobody. But go on and tap yourself and say, thank God. At least in this moment, I can declare I'm holy. I don't know what's going to happen at the benediction. But for now, I'm in his holy temple. For now, I'm on his holy ground. For now, I'm preaching his holy word. Hey, I'm holy. You can still celebrate holiness. Holiness is a road that very few are willing to travel. But in the end, it leads to everlasting life. God says, the unclean shall not pass over it. In other words, the ungodly, unrighteous, unholy, unredeemed, and unregenerate shall not pass over. But it shall be for others. I'm an other. I know y'all can't shout, but I'm an other. Those others are the ones who make the choice to follow Jesus. Because in choosing him, you're making a way for the Lord to straighten some things out in your life. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord extends his mercy toward the ignorant. We all should shout. Thank you, Jesus. And it just simply means unlearned. But God extends mercy toward the end. He knows that some of us end up on the wrong road out of our sheepish, immature, and fickle nature. But just like the parable of the lost sheep in Luke chapter 15, when I read verses 3 and 7, it encourages me and says, then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents that over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. God's grace and mercy has given us time to repent and to be rescued from impending danger and damnation. Somebody said, thank you, God. It is the Lord who makes our paths straight. It is the Lord who smooths out the rough places in our lives. And it, become, it is because of the Lord's mercies, thank you God, that we are not consumed. The text says to us, whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Cowboy, this gives me joy. Yeah, yeah, it gives me joy. Somebody ask me why. Oh Lord, I don't want to tell Lord, I don't want to be transparent. Amen. But in obedience to your will, I'll tell you, Brother Logan, Amen. this gives me joy because there have been times in my life yeah. with my foolish ways. Amen. I know y'all don't have this problem. My foolish thoughts, my foolish deeds, my foolish words and foolish friends could have easily led to my demise. Yeah. But God, uh, look beyond my faults my failures and my foolishness and allow me to leap over the pits, walk through the fire, and survive the storm created by my own foolishness. In order to straighten things out, he deals with the person, the provisions, the place, and the predators that are found along the path. No lion shall be there nor shall any ravenous beast go upon it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed hey, shall walk there. God has a way of protecting you from becoming prey, P-R-E-Y, to the predators that are on the path he's prepared for your purpose. Preach the peace, Winfrey. I'm doing the best I can. And believe me, there are some predators seeking to destroy you. 
that there are some predators seeking to discourage you. I don't hear nobody. There are some predators seeking to defeat you, to distract you, and if they can't do that, they'll at least disturb you. But I'm so glad. Hey, that no weapon, come on, Holy Ghost, that is formed against us shall prosper. I'm glad that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. I'm glad that when the wicked, even my enemies hey, and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell because God has us in a protected place. God has us in a prosperous place and a peaceful place where her harm nor danger can come near our dwelling. There is a hope in the future because God, hey, help me, George. I'm trying to not get excited, but my joy bells are ringing. There's a hope. I wish y'all were in here like you normally come, but since you ain't, I got to ride this boat with the few that God has sent here. There is a hope in the future because God has removed your stress. God is renewing your strength. God is straightening things out for you. He's going to straighten us out first. Then he'll straighten out everything around us and concerning us, which means that after the stressing, after the strengthening, and after the strengthening, there ought to be some singing. And the ransom of the Lord, I mean the Bible, shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So if you know, hey, you've been redeemed, you ought to say something. If it's the spoken word, speak it. If it's a song, sing it. If it's a poem, say it. But let somebody know that it was the Lord who gave us a future and a hope. It was the Lord who brought us out. It was the Lord who made a way. Do I have a witness in the building? It was the Lord who turned it around. It was the Lord who gave us another chance. It was the Lord who restored our joy. It was the Lord who gave us eternal life and took away our sorrow and sighing and gave us a song. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. So I came to tell somebody that there is a hope and a future regardless of what situation you find yourself in. I normally don't get this happy, but the Lord has just reminded me to tell somebody, be not dismayed, whatever be tied you. God will, I said God will, I said God will. yourself, and if you're close to somebody who ain't got the COVID, tell them God will take care of you. God has taken care of you. Hallelujah. Can you shout up that you got a hope if you got a future? It does not matter what the devil says. It does not matter what the sickness says, it does not matter what the symptoms say, it does not matter what your money says, it does not matter what your mama says, it does not matter what the government says, it does not matter what your circumstances 
fasting. Yeah. You've got to create your own. Yeah. Which means you have to have a personal relationship yeah. with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is possible. Yeah. Oh, are you ready to be saved? If you are on this phone and if you're watching via Facebook and you are ready to be saved, you can type in, I'm ready to be saved. Yeah. Jesus is waiting. He wants to save you. He went through the sacrificial process, the resurrection process, the Holy Ghost filling process, just so that you can have a right. But you've got to receive them, not by feelings, not by what you've heard others say about them, their underestimation of who Jesus is, but your faith alone. And if you're ready, you can repeat these words after me. That means say what I say. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe your son Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day, God raised him from the dead. And because I believe in my heart, what I have just confessed with my mouth, I thank you, Lord, that I'm saved. Thank you for saving me from this world, from myself, and from an eternity in hell. I give my life to you this day, and I thank you for receiving me into the family of faith. If you prayed that prayer and you were sincere, welcome. We thank God for it. We give God glory for you, accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And we ask that you would, as soon as possible, unite with the church. If partakers is the church you desire to become a member of, you can <laughs> type in the comments, I want to be a member of Partakers Forever. Amen. Just type in that you want to be a member of the church or you can email us at partakerschurch at outlook.com. Send your prayer requests, send your petitions if you want to uh, become a member of the church. If you type that in, we'll look and get your information and someone will call you back right away and begin the process of fellowshipping you into this local body of believers. We are located at 2550 South Liddesdale Street, Detroit, Michigan, Southwest Side, 48217, 2550 South Liddesdale Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48217. The Lord moves upon you to become a member of this church. We welcome you with the love of Jesus and open arms. Not the perfect church, but an imperfect people being perfected by a perfect Christ. Where we connect generations to Jesus. So no matter how young or old, Amen. there's room at the cross for you. Amen. And we invite you to come. Thank God for your prayers, your participation in today's worship experience. We're going to prepare to receive the Lord's tithes and offerings, and we want you to be part of this portion of worship as well. All of those who are prepared to give, there are two ways you can give online. You can go to Givelify, look up Partakers Church Baptist of Detroit, Hit that donate button and give whatever amount the Lord has placed on your heart to give. Or you can give via sale at PCB for Partakers Church Baptist, PCB.trustee at gmail.com. Again, PCB.trustee at gmail.com. Or you can mail it to our address again, 2550 South Liddesdale Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48217. We'll take a moment. If you're looking, uh, you know, if you're going to mail it in or if you have that offering, I'll lift up that phone or that device, whichever way you're sending it, as we prepare to, de to dedicate our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your holy and most righteous name. Thank you for the privilege of being able to give our tithes and offerings as your word has commanded us to. And God, we pray that our gifts are acceptable to you for they are being given from cheerful hearts according to your word we pray god that you would take these gifts and multiply these gifts and that they be used for your kingdom and to your glory and over and above the amount bless the heart of the giver is our prayer in jesus name amen we'll take a second for you to send your tithes and offerings for you to amen we're going to give god praise we're going to give god praise and we're going to glorify god Again, pray with us 
Pray for this church. Pray for us. Maddie, you know we love you. Deke, Willis, Deacon Ellis, all of those who have lost loved ones in the past year, y'all know we love you. We ain't forgot about you. Pastor's keeping you lifted up in daily prayer. Partakers, I wish you were here. I miss y'all. And I can't wait for that great getting up morning when the air is clear. Now, I know that once the governor releases us, there are going to be some who are going to be apprehensive. But uh, I'm just coming full gear. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to come and celebrate with those who are here. And you just pray and seek the Lord for yourself. But I believe that the storm is coming to an end real soon yeah. as God prepares his church to get his message out about his son. It's a great time for the gospel. Yeah. Again, let me tell you all, we thank and praise God for your participation in today's worship. We pray that something was said or done that will strengthen your walk with Christ, that will make you reconsider your relationship with Christ, that will give you the hope in the future that the Lord has promised We'll be back on Tuesday uh, on the conference call only. The conference call only. We will have Tuesday morning prayer at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Wednesday, we'll be here at 10 a.m. And you'll be able to watch us via Facebook Live and listen on the conference call for the Bible study lesson. You will be able to download a copy of the Bible, the Bible study outline on our Facebook page. I'm sorry, not on our Facebook page, on our website, www.pcb.org. Did I say it right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, www.pcb.org. Download the um, Bible study outline and our partakers pledge that we'll be reading every Sunday so that you can be in on it. Look, if it's been a blessing to you, share it with someone else. Amen. If you need to call us for prayer, you call the church. We're here on Wednesdays. Amen. For the most part, until this pandemic is over, and we want you to be safe, wear your mask, take your medicine. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and look, don't y'all inject yourself with no Lysol, yeah. no disinfectant. Yeah. Don't y'all listen to that foolishness <laughs> and end up having y'all die before you have to because you listen to somebody who ain't a doctor. Amen. 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 And so we're praying for you. We're praying for other churches and pastors who have the heavy task of making sure that God's people are still re reached with the word of God. We're going to prepare for our benediction. We thank and praise God for your participation in today's worship service. We ask that wherever you are, that you would stand. If the word blessed you, just type in this word blessed me. If you're on the conference, call it and bless you. Just tell the preacher, amen. Not doing it for the sake of ego, but we want to know that what God has given is really blessing us. We know his word will not return void. It will accomplish what it set out to do. Lift your hand to Jesus. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this worship experience. We thank you, God, that there is a hope in the future for all of us. That as you remove the stress as you renew the strength, as you straighten out some things, we end with a song of praise as an expression of our adoration and appreciation for your goodness and your grace. Now, God, we purposely pray that you would cover and bless everyone under the sound of my voice, those who are watching virtually, those who are on the conference, those who are here, and those who this message may reach. We pray that you will cover us, keep us, be with us, lead God and direct us until we meet again. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us, since forth, now, and forever. Let every heart say amen, 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 amen. and amen. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. And until we see each other again, partake us forever. forever. God bless you.